Hey everybody, it's Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in this week's episode, I'm going to address some questions that have come up over the last couple of videos. But first, if you haven't seen last week's video, I'd encourage you to go ahead and do so. I will put a link to it right up here. But it was all about how to make yogurt. Uh, this, you can do this for yourself. It's uh, using natural ingredients. You can do it whether you're in your house, your boat, your RV, whatever it is. Hope you check it out and we'll enjoy that. Over the last few weeks, we've received a couple of, of questions and they've, they've varied things from I thought this was a sailing channel. Did you sell your boat? How come you guys don't sail anymore? And other varied degrees of essentially what's going on? We haven't seen the boat in a while and um, kind of thought this was mainly about sailing. So I will address those questions in this week's video. But I think first, I probably ought to just share a little bit of what's been going on with us. So if you're new to our channel and you haven't actually been subscribed for a while, so you haven't seen the last three plus years of videos every single week about buying and refitting a classic sailboat, living aboard that sailboat, and all of our adventures doing that, I'll go into a little bit of the backstory here for just a few minutes and, and share with you some of the details that hopefully answer those questions that have come up from a few of you. I'm going to ask a question, and I'd love to get some feedback from people down below. Uh, and it has to do with dreams, right? If you had a dream, you had a, a thing you wanted to do, and for whatever reason, you didn't do it. Either you failed at it, or you changed your mind, or the dream modified. How did you go about handling it? Um, was it tough for you? I encourage everybody to go ahead and put some comments down below related that I'd love to converse back and forth with you and just sort of talk that through, because I think it's a very interesting dynamic we all face on a number of fronts. For us, a little bit of the sailing. So let me give you some of that backdrop. So Deb and I have lived aboard sailboats for the last eight years. Um, we were living in Dallas. Our kids were getting older. We decided we wanted a hobby, uh, decided to try sailing, bought our first sailboat on a lake, and we absolutely fell in love with the lifestyle. Decided then that we were going to move toward bigger water. We were going to buy a liveaboard sized boat. We were going to refit it, and we were going to do a, some level of modified cruising while I continued to work. We did just that, and uh, we've enjoyed it. It was eight full years, the last four years on our 51-foot Formosa while we refit that boat. As we refit the boat, we needed to do extensive work to it. We needed to put it in a yard and really get it up on the hard to do a lot of the work, which we did. And during that time, um, rather than get in a, go back into a house or try to live, you know, climb in a ladder with the girls, we decided to go ahead and pick up a camper, an RV. And we lived in that RV for almost a full year. Uh, as a way to have a home base and continue to do the work on the boat. Um, it was it was fun. I mean, we got to bounce around. We took the girls on trips, right? We did all the kind of things that give you the freedom of being able to do that. That was good. Our plan had always been to work our way east to Florida with the boat. That was always the plan. So we started thinking about this two years ago to say, when we finish this refit, let's go ahead and take the boat over toward Florida. We'll start looking at marinas there where we want a home base for a while and we'll check out those areas. So that plan was always in the back of our head. We finished that refit and it was time to start considering that. Earlier this year in April, I flew up to New Jersey. I intended to spend about two weeks there while my dad had some surgery and I was gonna help take care of him, whatever, just you know, be there to support him while he had that. Well, there were some complications and he ran into a lot of issues with that. I ended up staying in New Jersey all the way from April 2nd through the end of August. But certainly, as you can imagine, that changes some of your plans. Um, you know, I came home two times during that four plus month period. Um, but good news is dad's completely doing better and, and we're in much better shape. But certainly that changes and delays plans. We weren't doing work on the boat during that time. And we figured to take advantage of that time while I was up in New Jersey, Deb took the camper and rather than staying right there by the boat, she went ahead and came to Florida to start looking at um, places. Maybe six months prior to that, we started thinking, you know, marinas in Florida are expensive. Instead of doing that, why don't we take a look and see if we can find a house or a lot. We'll see if we can pull the boat right up behind it, continue to live on the boat, and we'll Airbnb the house out or something like that. Um, but what a great way to do it. Like sort of offset some of the cost of storing it in a marina where you get nothing from it. At least here you get some equity, maybe a little bit of cash flow. As Deb got to Florida and started looking at places, it sort of became apparent pretty quickly that wasn't going to happen. The places that were nice enough to be able to keep a deep water sailboat without bridge restrictions also had enough internal rules, policies, and laws that don't let you just live on your boat. I get why, right? I mean, we live on our boat, but we keep it looking nice. It doesn't look like an old derelict boat, but on paper, there's nothing different between what we do versus what you know these derelict boats you see on some of these waterways look like, where you know they could never run or move but somebody's just squatting on them or something. 
So I get it. There's rules and laws against that. And an interesting thing happened. As you look at enough houses, all of a sudden you start imagining yourself being in that. You start thinking a long, nice, warm shower wouldn't be bad. Um, laundry right here in the house, boy, that would be pretty convenient. And wouldn't it be nice to have a pool where we could just swim sometimes? Uh, and the next thing you know, we were looking at places that suited our needs, uh, something that we would be comfortable making our home base and then using the boat to make trips. So it really changed the mentality a little bit of what we started looking for. And it wasn't to say that things weren't still going on at the boat. Our daughter was staying on the boat and taking care of it. Honestly, I thought she would be staying on Last Affair, but Dream Chaser sitting right next to her in a slip next to it. And I certainly understand wanting the additional space and the luxuries of Dream Chaser over Last Affair. Dream Chaser is our 51-foot Formosa, um, and Last Affair is our 43-foot Gulf Star. It is good to have somebody on board that can keep an eye on things. I mean, boats tend to fall apart quick if you're not if they're not sort of monitored and cared for on a regular basis. And to her credit, Whitney does clean the water and the air filters. She ensures the bilges aren't having any issues. She washes the deck and the top sides, and she's there to make sure nothing goes wrong. She's on board, um, and she kind of takes care of things, which is great. Um, but there has been times when there'll be an issue on the boat and Whitney will call and tell me and in some cases she can take care of it. Um, in other cases, I'll walk her through what to do. I mean, one time we had a problem with the bilge pumps and uh, they weren't kicking on, none of them. And we weren't really sure what was going on. Um, it kind of went unnoticed until the shower sump had overflowed. It, you know, it clogged up and it overflowed and that water floated to the bilge and she's like, hey, that's not pumping out. Um, but we spent a couple of hours on the phone with like FaceTime and video cameras and pictures and, um, you know, each of us with our Bluetooth connections on and walking her through how to test electrical connections and resolve the issue, at least temporarily, until I can get back there to do a more permanent repair with, um, with replacing some of that wiring. And then sometimes we get these little gems where Whitney will notice the camera's on or she's talking to one of us on the phone and she'll say, go look at the camera, and then she'll go make a funny face in it. I think most of you know we have cameras on the boats. Um, it's how we make sure they're secure and that nothing's going on that shouldn't be and that nobody comes on board when they shouldn't be, um, you know, and not be in there at times, right? We, we need to make sure we have that capability. Um, but watching this footage in fast motion over a long period of time is very funny to me. It makes me laugh, everybody walking real fast. But I've also come to this conclusion when his boyfriend smokes too much, man, dude, you, when you watch the camera that's only based on motion and you see the you know, out of the hatch, down the dock, under the dock, back off the dock, onto the boat, down the hatch, back and just keep repeating that over and over. It looks funny. So while all that's going on on the boat over the last month or so, Deb and I are kind of enjoying living in the house right now. Um, you know, you can see here we spend a lot of time outside. There's more room. The laundry's close and convenient. Um, the showers can be long, but frankly, I'm so used to living on the boat that I still, out of habit, will rinse off with the water, then, you know, turn the water off and then lather up and then rinse off and then lather the hair and then turn the water back on again. Um, so I still probably only shower with two gallons of water. Uh, that's a habit that's a little bit hard to break, but heck, the cons conservation is not a bad thing. Um, but this is also a busy time of the year for me at work. So um, honestly, we're just enjoying kicking back and I mean, look at it around. This is pretty. <laughs> we're enjoying it. So this week I'm traveling for work for our big uh, kickoff meeting at the beginning of every year. And we're doing it at the Rosen Shingle Creek in Orlando, Florida. Um, it's always a pretty cool event and it's great to see people you don't uh, see every week from work. Every time I come here, I always ask for one of their garden rooms, and a lot of times they can accommodate it at no additional cost, so check this out. So, this is what I love about these hospitality suites. Um, you can see it has, it has what they call a Murphy bed. It's perfectly comfortable and I'm going to be in here anyway. So it's a great way that if you uh, bring coworkers or friends and you want to all get together or something in, in somebody's room, it's nice. It's good to entertain people in plenty of room in here. Um, heck, I'll give you an example here. Even just a walk-in closet, one of two in the room, nice conversational pit for holding a meeting. Uh, over here we have a nice little wet bar area with some seating, obviously the bed. There's another closet right there. Um, 
you know, just a small dining table for 12 for any other meetings you might have. Uh, a nice conversational pit right here. Obviously TV if you want. Um, and then as we go into the restroom, I like what they did. They sort of have it like as a, as a hospitality suite kind of thing. A little place for a sink and, and bathroom and then you know, obviously a big walk-in shower. Um, the reason I typically request these is they either sit along the golf course or along the walkway or one of the ponds areas. So you can quickly see that as you step outside, here's the view from the patio with tables and chairs and whatnot. You know, just gorgeous. This one's a little odd. It's got a big sort of area here for maybe entertaining or something, which is unique. Most of the time, it's just a patio right out over the golf course. But you certainly get a sense of the size and scope of this room. Love it. So it was nice. I decided I had some time before my coworkers arrived, and I went and pampered myself. Looks like you're going nowhere. You kind of get past the gym and that long industrial looking hallway and then you get back into these industrial suites along the first floor uh, love this and i grab a little bit of beer and wine i'll keep it in the fridge so we can hang here outside of events what a phenomenal night um i really do enjoy getting to go into these things and seeing all my coworkers that i don't get to see very often until i'm at like an event like this so um you know we went and sat out by the little pool bar uh, earlier today and sat with coworkers, had a couple of drinks and some chips and salsa and just chatted for like three or four hours. Uh, and then we had a reception and dinner for the services team. So we got to go there. It was like, you know, old homecoming week with my old uh, coworkers and teammates and, uh, you know, managers in the past. So it was really kind of cool. Uh, and I love the fact that, you know, the CEO is there, the president of the company and, and you know, the, the executive team that come and show their support to all the different parts of the organization, including this group, which is the service leadership team, and it's a fairly small team compared to the 1,400 that we'll have here tomorrow or something, but man, what a great night. So uh, I got back to my room. I needed to put some things together for tomorrow. I did a little bit of work, but it's great because, you know, I got this little patio room, so I just sat outside on the chair, drank a cup of coffee. You know, it's almost midnight or so, but I got some work done, and now I'm about to hit the hay, so I'll check in and give you guys an update tomorrow, but man, this is cool stuff, and you know, again, it's... It's neat when you enjoy the people you work with enough that you want to see them, you want to spend time with them, and it's really pretty cool. Well, good day, everybody. So when I left you last, it was yesterday evening. I had just gotten back from the evening um, dinner, and today I got up this morning, sat on a little outside patio here for a little bit, drank a glass of water, just sort of relaxed before I was going to the breakfast that started at 7.30. So I went over to the breakfast, and then we had uh, you know, a big service leadership meeting. There's probably 120, 150 people there. It was really cool to get to see kind of all these coworkers that I don't get to see very frequently because they're spread all over the country and even the world. So really cool to get to you know connect with people that you talk to on a regular basis, but you don't always um, actually see them, right? And you're like, oh, your Outlook picture looks similar, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we did that. We kind of broke out midday and then there was a women's leadership forum um, that the women could go to if they wanted to, or guys could as well. Uh, and then we also did, um, we did a little breakout. I took some of my team members over to a place called Rocco's Tacos. It's kind of a Mexican restaurant and tequila bar. They specialize in like table side guacamole and they have over a hundred tequilas. So pretty cool place. We sat for about two and a half hours on the patio, you know, had the chips and guacamole and had a nice lunch. Um, back in the hotel, I'm going to get some work done before our big kickoff and the rest of the um, sales teams come in for our, our annual sort of kickoff meeting, which is going to be exciting. So, yeah, we have our meeting starting uh, tonight. Uh, the big general session is tonight. And then uh, after that is the welcome dinner with the larger group. So I will talk to you guys later on. It was really cool. Um, during the dinner reception, they had a bunch of little stations with cornhole games, open bars, buffets. Um, they had uh, several places where you could take pictures with props. They also had this guy hand rolling cigars that you could come help yourself to. It was really a cool event. I had to tell you, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you, I was excited. Um, so yesterday we had a great day, we took the team out to lunch. We had a nice dinner with a couple of my coworkers. Today was sort of all day meetings and whatnot, and then tonight was an award ceremony. And, uh, and I gotta tell you, I'm excited that the blue tag right there is a pretty big deal at this company. Um, 
and you know, I, my uh, my work this year meant something. And to show their appreciation, they're sending Deb and I to Hawaii for five days and four nights, and then as an extra special performance thing, we go for an extra three days to another place uh, in Hawaii. These are vacations that are not the way I typically vacation, so it is awesome. It's going to be five star the whole way, so I am just beside the moon with this whole thing, and I texted Deb and said, you're not going to believe it, baby. <laughs> I will. We're going. So it's really, really exciting. Uh, yeah, I'm thrilled. So I had a nice big reception from everybody outside, and you know, yeah. I have to come on into my room and uh, relax. I'm gonna get get to bed a little bit early, and uh, yeah, this is man. <laughs> I'm happy. It really is exciting. It really is. So, Diamond Club, baby. I'm excited. I must admit, I'm still on a little bit of a high after the Diamond Club announcement last night, and it's um, that's pretty cool. So anyway, uh, yeah, got a good night's sleep, uh, started my day fairly early, presented to uh, a group this morning, uh, it was really cool getting to see people that, uh, that I don't always see, right? It's really neat doing this. I, I, I enjoy these big company trips. They're a lot of time, um, they're a lot of effort, <laughs> but you know, you get to, I don't know, it seems like reunite with old friends that we see once a year, maybe twice a year, uh, and it really is kind of a neat little reunion, right? This. Uh, the culture here is really cool. The employees are good to work with, right? I really like all my coworkers, um, and I don't know, feel a little bit nostalgic and happy today. <laughs> so yeah, I, I did the did my little presentation this morning. Um, stepped out, and I'm gonna hit the road by 10. And it's kind of cool. One of my coworkers is going to visit family members. Uh, happens to be in the town right next to where we live, so uh, I'm gonna give her a ride back over there. And uh, yeah, I get to not be uh, by myself in the car the whole time. So pretty special stuff. All right, I am checking out of this freaking awesome room. <laughs> Uh, packing up the rest of my stuff and gonna hit the road a little early. I should be home by one or two o'clock, which is gonna be awesome. All right, see you soon. First time here. First time here, yes. Okay. So th this is the lady is Parmesan. This lasts me right now five days. Oh my God. I do a lot of butter bank. So what I'm doing now, I'm shaving a lot of cheese. I can see that. Really quite pretty. Woo! <laughs> Homemade pasta, Yes, sir. Woo! Mama! Bada bing! Oh my god, he doesn't even do this. That is bad. <laughs> So, based on uh, tomato and prosciutto. Water sauce. Okay, now the pasta and the cheese goes back into the pot. For another, another plumber, thank you, my dear. Thank you, my dear. One more fire, okay? No okay. problem, we love fire. Now I gotta melt the cheese. Oh. But then the lady give a little cheese on top so you can taste it. Okay, one more plumber, okay? I'm on fire. Oh, well, you're hot. It's nothing else, right? <laughs> nice. So I don't do discrimination, okay? Thank you, honey. Man, that food looks good. I think Deb and I are going to have to find a date day and go over there. So all in all, I hope that this video helped to explain some of the things going on with us, a little of the details of what's been happening in our life, why you don't see the boat um, on it every week, why you don't see us sailing, why you don't see repairs going on. The reality of my work schedule right now is a little crazy. This time of year is always a little bit nuts. Um, September, October are sort of our year-end things at work, so I know I don't have a lot of free time there. You move into the holiday season with 
November and December and New Year's. Deb and I are going to be going on a trip, as you saw earlier, to Hawaii early in January. And all of a sudden, the reality is we're months away from being able to get the boat here. Um, disappointing, yes, but we're also enjoying ourselves. So I hope that you'll stick around. I hope you still find this interesting. I hope we can continue to provide content that's interesting to um, people that have common interests as us. Um, those are things like sailing, boating, living on the water. We still have the power boat sitting right out here that we will continue to use and you know, be sharing little adventures we do in that. Um, and honestly, it's about raising grandchildren at this point. Um, this wasn't always in the plan when we started everything out, but you know we're thrilled with that change and we have an opportunity to raise children again. And honestly, I take pride in that. Um, but some of that means we have to do, th do a few things different. Um, so we're different. I mean, we're not Delos, we're not Atticus, we're not gone with the winds. Um, we're just not those people that are gonna be sailing all around the world and doing all this enjoyable stuff every single day of the year. Um, the good news is we've always found a way to have a modified cruising lifestyle to allow us to live on a boat in a way that worked for us with our jobs, with our family situation, with what's going on with us. And honestly, this is no different. So I suspect we'll be able to have some fun trips. We'll be able to share really interesting adventures with you and also share probably a very realistic side of boating and cruising and that is not everybody can go and just take off um, and if you can it doesn't mean you can't love the heck out of that sailing and cruising lifestyle so we intend to still do that it just may be a little while before we have the boat so from gil and deb and the girls not aboard the boat but in the house right now we'll see y'all later and if you are sailing safe sailing and a following seas